This is your boy Comedic Energy, and this is Dirty Mouth Radio. Dirty Mouth Radio, produced by Livewire Sound and Entertainment. We got a guest in the building today. I let everybody introduce themselves right now. Hey, it's your day. It's your girl Golden. It's your boy Lou. Boy, there you go. All right. So my man Lou is in the building, man. He's going to drop some jewels on everybody, man, about pretty much black finance, man. But before we do that, how's everybody been? Let's start there. Uh, we're doing well. It's the, you know, season mm, of family. Uh-huh. Family. Okay. okay. I'm saying family. Okay. <laughs> Don't do me today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to start y'all up. <laughs> what about you, Golden? How you doing? I've been doing nothing, chilling. That's all. Same old, same old. Same old, same old. My man Lou, what's popping, man? Uh, everything good, man. Just grinding. Right. You know, yeah. trying to cover these bills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. What's happening? What's happening? You should be playing a bass line right now. <laughs> hit, that, hit that E string for me real quick. <laughs> All right, man. So black finance, yo. So I ain't done this in a while. And I'll admit right now I'm a little ill prepared, but I'm going to try to do this quick, very brief comedic history thing, man. So, uh, Black finance. Everybody know about redlining and all that stuff. Correct. So by definition, redlining is basically um, refusing a loan to somebody because they live in like a, a poor area and they're deemed a financial risk. So um, I believe the date is like in the fifties. So we live in Charlotte, right? So there was this community called Brooklyn. And uh, <laughs> so where you see what? it was called Brooklyn, like Brooklyn, oh. New York. So go ahead, Lou. Lou, Lou. I'm, I'm sorry. This this right here. <laughs> see, we, we because Brooklyn, Cherry, yeah, Brook Hill, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I, I can only speak for specifically Brooklyn because that's the only research I've did. But I've, I've heard about these areas that Lou just mentioned as well. Um, in city center city, Charlotte, where you have like the NASCAR Hall of Fame, you got all those buildings, even uh, Bank of America, the headquarters, all those buildings that used to be a neighborhood and the neighborhood was called Brooklyn. And um, it pretty much it was redlining that kind of ended all of it it was a poor area but it was a majority black area and it was actually its own black wall street a lot of people don't know that um they had buses they had businesses they were i mean in i guess the government's eyes they deemed them a financial risk and they and it was redlining that ended them but they were thriving and they were making money. They were deemed, you know, pretty much deeming a threat in their eyes. I was about to say, anything we doing yeah. that's doing good for us, yeah. Threat. And like when I started reading up on this, and I'll follow it up because I found it on YouTube, and I'll um, I'll post it right after you know we put up the episode and everything. Uh, it made me think about other areas. So a lot of people may not know about um, Central Park. Central Park used to be a black neighborhood. Central yeah. Park in New York. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that was actually bombed and they ended it completely, decimated the whole area. And now you have Central Park as big as Central Park is. That was actually a a thriving black neighborhood. Mm. And it, it makes you think like this happens everywhere. I mean, it may not be as violent as Central Park, but they they've systematically kind of decimated some thriving black communities. And it's always somewhere where they're really thriving on a black Wall Street level. When I say a black Wall Street level, I'm talking about businesses like impacting the community on an economic scale. So, you know, we have the movie The Banker that was supposed to come out. And um, I wanted to know what your viewpoint was with The Banker and how you guys feel about it. Pretty much 
like have y'all seen a trailer for it or anything like that i just seen a brief trailer and then all of a sudden it was pulled I mean, yeah really so it was about two um entrepreneurs they hired a white guy to kind of pose as the head of the company okay and Lou, you know anything about it? No, I, I was going to say, I, I knew that much about it. About yeah. The, the, the somewhat of a plot. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't I didn't get too far in depth with it because, like you said, they did pull it. And it's hard to find any information on it now. And that kind of got me wondering. But it's basically they become a bank and they're helping black people, as far as I know. And... Um, now the whole movie got pulled by Apple because of somebody somewhere they said there was sexual abuse. Sexual abuse from yeah, the main from the actual person. Actual, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? They ain't pull whole them Weinstein movies. Exactly. Well, what do you mean? You mean that real life character? Yeah, the real life yeah. character. So the real life character was doing abuse. During like the time they were abuse. doing the, but during the time that they were creating the bank, or post. I don't see. That's the thing. I don't know the whole situation when it actually occurred. I think it happened beforehand, and it came up, and so they thought it was like a threat, or they didn't want to put it out because of the actor that was in it was allegedly, I guess. Oh, the, the actor, not the actual person. I mean, the, no, the, the actual, yeah, yeah, portrayal yeah the actual the person, person. yeah. But my thing is, and like I always say, is the timing. Every time something like this happens, and you you coming on the cusp of something great, they bring up something from the past. But it's information that's going to be put out to the masses. They don't want us to know certain things. And that's what I'm saying. Like, for, for the people that may think that what I'm saying is just a bunch of bull, why is it that they always do that? Now, I was reading somewhere that um, recently, I think it was from, um, who was it from? Was it from Riza Islam? It was from somebody, and they were talking about the Cosby situation. Right. And they said the Cosby situation, no, no, it was Umar. I think it was Dr. Umar Johnson. Okay. He was talking about how the Cosby situation was not based on him buying NBC. Oh. It was actually based on his house and a few other people's houses in Massachusetts sitting on oil. Hmm. Yeah. Sitting on oil? Yeah, his, his house and a few other people's houses in that area is sitting on a lot of oil. And they've been trying and trying to get him out of get there. Him out. Yeah. So they can get that oil. He's right. like... Because the Natural. money's in the dirt. The exactly. Air service, I was to say, because they want what's under exactly. the dirt. NBC is chump change. Yeah. Compared to natural oil. Exactly. A natural resource. Exactly. Yeah. That's going to bring in God, money. Because that, that's the reason why, you know, in real estate, when you buy a house, mm -hmm. part of your contract, mm -hmm. when you go into contract, you sign the paper saying that, you know, the builder or whoever. Mm -hmm. Is relinquishing all the, all the rights. natural rights. Yeah. Mm. So if you happen to strike yeah. oil on that, mm -hmm. it is one hundred percent yours. Because mm. yeah. you can sell, you can have a property, and mm -hmm. you can sell the air above it and yep. below it. Yep. Really? Yeah. Right. Because everything, yeah, everything yeah. Mm -hmm. above it and below it is yours. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. That's why you have to make sure when you sign it. This was Bill Cosby and a few other people that uh, I don't know if they're known. But some people in that area, like it's a lot of oil in that spot. Like that. You think it was some type? Of, so him going to jail was some type of conspiracy? Well, saying? we knew that. Yeah, but <laughs> it was you know originally in the episodes I kept talking about NBC, NBC, NBC. But with that, like Lou just said, you know, NBC, NBC is chump change when it comes to oil. So it's like that may have been the actual reason, right? You know, so the plot thickening. Yeah. Yeah, right. but they're not gonna put that out. Of course not. Nah. Of course not. Because I mean, and the thing is, it's that's like a sleight of hand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please concentrate on the NBC shit. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> why you why you focusing that over there? Yeah. We it's we, the we over here. Yeah. Yeah. Doing doing this, and if you think about it, it's it's very strategic mm -hmm. because, like you said, yeah. let's say it's his house and. Four houses on on either side, yeah. where this oil line is possibly running through. Mm -hmm. If they can get Cosby out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, boom, he's gone. 
Yeah. Because of legal issues. Yeah. Where now possibly his property is tied up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In probate. Yeah. Because exactly. of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now it really gets thick because yeah. the property's in probate. Mm -hmm. They can get rid of it for chump change because exactly. they know what's in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they just yeah. walk to the neighbors and say, hey. Hey, yeah. <laughs> XYZ. That's true. God. And uh, I mean, I saw it happen in my town where I'm from in Highport, North Carolina, mm. where a man, he wanted membership to a country club. Mm -hmm. But he was like, he walked in in blue jeans and a plaid shirt and they looked down on him. Really? But they didn't know that the brother was an international cattle farmer. Wow. Had Jesus. plenty of money. So what did he do when they, when they denied him? He went to his next door neighbors mm -hmm. that had like a 4,200 square foot home. Mm -hmm. Walked in with a briefcase full of cash and was like, I want to buy your house. Man, I think I've heard that story before. Right? Yeah. Husband said, okay, cool. Yeah. Closed the briefcase, told his wife, hey, we moving. <laughs> <laughs> Had a sign put up in the yard that said North Cross Country Club right across the street oh, from High Point yeah. Country Club. Are you mm -hmm. serious? And that move, the move that he did strategically actually devalued the property line of the country club. Oh, the country club. Wow. You talking about a major move. Yeah. And what time was this? Like, what time period? Man, we talking like 95, 96. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, wow. not that long ago. Wow. I had to research that. Yeah. And what's cool is... So was he eye color? Yes. All right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Mr. North, Mr. North Cross was a brother. He okay. was one of the only brothers that, that ever made a move like that. And so in High Point... Emerywood is like the Myers Park mm -hmm. to, to Charlotte. It's the old money. Okay. 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 And um, that long money. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. High Point is full of furniture. All yeah. the, right. all the right. all so mm -hmm. furniture brands that most people ain't even heard of. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. Henry Dunn, Drexel Heritage. Really. Uh, Marsh. Marsh Furniture is a big cabinetry company. Wow. I can, I'm gonna tell you any apartment building across this country mm -hmm. that was built from I'd say late 60s all the way up to the late 90s mm -hmm. I can guarantee you they had Marsh cabinets in them damn they made cabinets my uncle wow. worked for them for almost 30 years really and good good mm -hmm. furniture mm -hmm. but that's old money yeah yeah then you got cone meals mm -hmm. denim so all your Levi's yeah you know salvage denim right here in North Carolina so all that old money was in High Point damn. in the Greensboro area Mr. Norcross came in and just kind of Rattle some things up. What? <laughs> Damn, you talking about moves, man? That's it. Hey, get this, more strategic by him buying that house. Guess what he turned it into? What he turned it into basically the guest house for all his international clients. Are you serious? So when they would come into town for yeah, business, yep, don't get no hotel. Right, Damn. you staying here on my property. Yep. That I'm writing off as a yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. seventeen and a half percent tax credit. Are you serious? On a two point five million dollar home. Yeah, dog. Yeah. And this is recent. Like this is is I'm this about is to say, this ain't not, yeah right? yeah right. It's, not, yeah dog. Not that far. Not not long ago. Yeah. Not long ago. Shoot. I'm telling you, the country club was beating down his door. Are you serious? Airbnb and shit. Trying, <laughs> right, exactly. Before it was Airbnb, yeah, you know? Yeah. But they, the country club was beating down his door. Airbnb and me. <laughs> <laughs> they ended up giving him a membership. Really? He went mm -hmm. wanting to buy into the country club and yeah. invest into it, and they ended up having to give him one. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a good Damn. dude. Cause I, see, I worked at the country club, mm. yeah, okay. and um, every Christmas, man, this cat would walk through the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Every staff member got a hundred dollar bill in the card. Are you every serious? Christmas, every every Christmas. Damn. Eighty eight staff members. Word. Every Christmas, hundred dollars in a handwritten personal card. He was just a good dude. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah. Damn, man. Now my thing with that is. Why can't we have like more people of that? Why can't they all come together and we just establish 
Like when when I hear stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of people out there that's like that. You got Byron Allen, you got him, you got so many other people. Why can't they all come to the table and actually create another Black Wall Street? Is it the fear of the repercussion of doing it? Like probably, yeah, I, I say, yeah, I, yeah, I, I would say that. Also, I think it's fear on both on two sides, right? Mm-hmm. The fear of being sabotaged, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. from let's say the government, yeah, right, yeah. But then also fear of um, internal, uh, you know what I'm saying, like Meaning, implosion. Mm-hmm. How can I put it? Um, When we look at other demographics, right? Yeah. That come from a long line of wealth. Mm -hmm. One thing we have to, if you look, they're very strategic. Yeah. They have no problem writing people out of the family wheel. Yeah. Right. Right? That's true. Because they understand that the end end goal is greater than one individual. Mm -hmm. Right. We right. all been tasked right. to preserve this wealth, this family lineage. Uh-huh. And if you want to go be a black sheep, go well, go for it. Do yeah. your thing, but understand, I'm going to the lawyer. Uh-huh. And you're getting rolled out of the wheel. Yeah, I right. see what you're saying. So, so, and I think part of that is, um, I would say, due to the times, because when you look at the time, the times are very different. Uh-huh. Um, I some people kind of, I get a lot of. Lashback, uh-huh. so to say, from my position with it. Uh-huh. But there are times where I wonder if desegregation was quite possibly a tool to help get to where we are as far as this really internal division that we have. So that's kind of what I've been saying. So you're saying segregation was the tool that led to our downfall when integration was, I mean, hold up, let me get this De- right. Desegregation. Desegregation. Which was integration, right? Exactly, was the tool that brought us down. Is that what you're saying? To, yeah, to a degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Yeah, just simply yeah. because when before when you had no other option, right? We did so much more, right? Mm-hmm. So when we talk about neighborhoods like Brooklyn, which yeah. to give any listeners an idea who wouldn't know, most people ride through Brooklyn. Anytime they go through Uptown, exactly. if you go into the epicenter, yeah, Fourth and Brevard, that's yeah. a part of Brooklyn. Yeah, the Spectrum Center, yeah. that was a part of Brooklyn. Yeah, and most of those areas, the reason why they were centrally located to what we call Uptown Charlotte, mm-hmm. is because you have to remember in that time the majority of the um, employment mm-hmm. for melanated folks was in like service industry. Yeah. To the residents of Myers Park. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And so, essentially, so particularly Cherry mm-hmm. off of King's Drive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. King's Drive, Queens, it's like eight Queen, Queens Road, West, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So, Cherry was located right there mm. by uh, Presbyterian Hospital. Wow. Right? Completely black neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Most of the people that lived in the neighborhood either worked in the hospital mm-hmm. or worked in the homes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As in the service, right? Yeah. Domesticated workers. Exactly. To the residents of Myers Park. So their homes were strategically placed within a short walk so, from where right. they worked. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Subsequently, had businesses. Because at the end of the day, okay, I'm walking to work in Myers Park, but I know I can't go to this store. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I'm not welcome here. Mm-hmm. But I know Joe Beeman got a store mm-hmm. down here off of South Kings. Yeah. So that's why I get all my groceries. Crazy. That's why, uh-huh. you know. Wow. So, so when we look at the strategic uh, timeline with it, mm-hmm. it was in the mid to late fifties, early sixties. Yeah. When the advertisement companies, the marketing companies, mm-hmm. went to the the big product people and yeah. service people and say, "Yo." Y'all need to take a, 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 a look at this from a number standpoint. Mm-hmm. Why are you telling black folks that they not welcome in your store or you don't want them to buy your product? You missing out they, on they a trillion yeah. dollar demographic. Yeah. Right. African Americans are the more we spend the most money. Yeah, we got right? the biggest spending power. Yeah. You know, we have the largest spending base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And so that's when they start saying, okay, yeah, cool, you can come on in. Yeah. Come on, nah, nah, mm-hmm. come sit down, Nick. You know, mm-hmm. you can't a, beat them, join them. 
Right. Or at least make, make them it, feel welcome yeah, to a degree. Illusion of inclusion. Right. Yeah. So, in essence, like you say, they don't really want you. They want they that want money. money. But they want that green in yeah. your pocket. Yeah. And Damn. so, that whole, you know, and don't get me wrong, I'm I'm grateful. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, it, is, it was 1960. I'm looking at it now. 60s. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, because, I mean, at the end of the day, without desegregation, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been able to go into places that I can go into now. Yeah. Right? But, as my grandmother would say, don't be nobody's fool. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and understand that everybody that smiles at you ain't always your friend. Yeah. That's the truth. You know? That and, is the truth. That's crazy, man. But, but, I mean, to my original point, it's just, in those times, you had no choice but to keep the dollar within our community. Mm-hmm. Because that is all you could go to. Yeah. You had no other option. You had no other yeah. option. Yeah. But as soon as the options became vast, mm-hmm. right, and that's when we start to see the structural decline mm-hmm. right, of little bit by little bit the black dollar leaving the black community mm-hmm. and going into other communities. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, and then when you also have to tap into the psyche of it as well. Yeah. You yeah. know, that is a big part of it too. Mm-hmm. The psychological aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Because oppression is very much a psychological thing. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So do you think um oh. go ahead. Go ahead, Craig. No, I was just gonna follow up with what you were saying earlier. If you wanted more information about what uh comedic energy we were just talking about uh, with the whole Brooklyn situation. Um, I guess it's called the uh Urban Renewal Project. Exactly. Um and they actually have a video on YouTube talking about Brooklyn and Charlotte and uh, how a, it's, uh, it's called how a black community was erased from uptown Charlotte. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That is the exact video. I'll, uh, I'm going to post it. I'll post it up on the Instagram mm-hmm. so people can yeah, see Char- it. Charlotte Historical Site, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm not originally from Charlotte, so I'm not familiar with any of these communities, but I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and we basically had something similar. Mm-hmm. To a black area like that on um, Second Street. Second Street, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, do they still do with a Two Street Festival? They still yeah. do the Two Street Festival. Yeah. Wow. First of all, Richmond, Virginia is like the most festival having city. <laughs> I've ever. Are you serious? Because I always lived there and felt like nothing was going. Nah, on. man. I talked to my home. My homegirl lived there, and during that that spring summer, mm-hmm. I call her at least once a week. Yeah, I'm going to this festival. I'm going to that. Word, I'm like, damn. <laughs> Richmond Lynn, you know. Shout out to Croker Spot. <laughs> True that. You know what I mean? But actually, I'm, I want if I can, I want to plug a friend of mine. Yeah, um, her ahead. name is uh, Kenya Templeton. Mm-hmm. On uh, IG is uh, Urban Girl Granola World. It's okay. her uh, Instagram handle, and I send you that so you can yeah. know, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah. But uh, I want to plug her because she is um, an avid uh, cyclist. Okay. Who who loves to promote black folks enjoying bike riding. Mm, and okay. she knows a lot about these communities. Mm-hmm. And during the summer, she actually does these bike rides. Called, it's an easy ride. Yeah. It's for anybody, you know, all skill levels welcome. Mm-hmm. Where she does a community bike ride. Wow. Through the, and points out all these old communities that were destroyed. Okay. Really? Into redlining. And it is it is like so it's so it's fitness, yeah, fun and education. All at the same time. All at the time. same time. Yeah. I just followed you, Urban Girl, Granola Girl. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and she yo, dope, dope sister. Yeah. She's seen. She's into um natural medicine, mm. and whatnot. Yeah. She, I think she's uh at like Earth Fair and Concord now. Really? So like when you talk mm. about needing to get rid of a head cold, yeah, without going to yeah. the doc. Yeah. Listen. She be dropping gems, so Word. you know. Shout out to my sister, love. You. Yeah, say that one more time. What's her? What's her uh, handle? Her Urban IG? girl, granola, granola world. world. Urban girl, granola world. Um, I like that. <laughs> so, because mm-hmm. we were talking about redlining when you started, right? The yeah. interesting thing about redlining specific to Charlotte, mm-hmm. if you go mm-hmm. to. Um, if you go to Harvey B. Gantt Center, yeah. they, have, they have an exhibit on Brook Hill. Oh, it's, okay. It's a photo exhibit shot by my friend uh, Alvin C. Jacobs Jr., mm. dope photographer here mm-hmm. in Charlotte. Yeah. Originally from Chicago, been in Charlotte for a while now. 
and they reached out to him to curate this. Wow. Um, because he he is an advocate. He's a advocate. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, community based photographer. Mm -hmm. He covered Ferguson. He's covered. Really. He's covered. Um, the water crisis in Flint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the brother's just all about creating a photojournalist perspective yeah. of what we go through yeah. right? Right. As, yeah. as, as melanated black and brown folks in this country. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, they reached out to him to, to do to help curate the exhibit. Wow. So now I'm going to Harvey Vegan. So, I go there, but now yeah. I'm going to go there and really <laughs> yeah. pay attention. The Book Hill exhibit is actually a very good... Um, exhibit to really understand how to quote my brother Alvin mm -hmm. how um, poverty is violence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right poverty yeah. is violence mm -hmm. and mm, it is the, the, the exhibit yeah. is a beautiful exhibit of the people of Brook Hill but what's interesting is they blew up the Charlotte map mm -hmm. Where the red lining began. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, this is a map from like the 50s. Mm -hmm. The map has not been readjusted since. The map to this day, to this day. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Is the same. The red lining is the same. Wow. So if you check that exhibit out, yeah. then you go down the block to the Levine, Levine. Uh, Museum mm -hmm. of yeah. the South. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you see how that affects property value mm. right really? they, they, it's all about the value yeah so part of that process not only was to destroy that community mm -hmm. but to also figure out a way to devalue the land that that mm. was there yeah right yeah and force that community out yeah yeah so that the people who had cash in the mattress could buy the land at a quarter on the dollar ah uh, ah right yeah introducing uptown charlotte exactly mm -hmm. ah wow bank of america wow it's all strategic mm -hmm. oh it definitely right? is yeah and so the whole concept of gentrification mm -hmm. those that keep themselves in an astute financial position always seem to come out on top yeah yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's it's very cyclical though. It's a cycle. Yeah. They push us out for a little while, mm -hmm. and then once we rebuild in another area, right. get the area popping again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then they want to come in. Yo, mm -hmm. that's where we need to be. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right, look at right, right. Noda. Yeah. Noda yeah. was where you could live as a thriving artist. Yeah. At one point. Yeah. Yep. I lived off yeah. of Faison right behind Brooks. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Didn't that owner just get killed? Yeah. Look, one, of yeah. Owner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. one of the co-owners, Mr. Brooks, man. Mm -hmm. Yo, how, how you attack a man? He trying to open up for the day. Yeah. Sad, sad situation. Yeah, very sad. But telling you, I lived on Faison. I remember when I think we had a three-bedroom crib. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was paying like collectively maybe like a buck 25 a month. Wow. wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For a three-bedroom. Yeah. Bedroom. yeah. Now, a studio apartment over there is almost two that. grand a month. Two grand? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah they Ain't building it. They coming over there. And it's all yeah. old hosiery mills now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. dope. Mm -hmm. that industrial yeah. you know, it's cool right yep. but it's the popping place to be yep. Yep. it seems right. like they do that in every city yeah. Yeah. yeah and no matter where you go yeah it's the same it's plan it's the same plan yeah Figure out how so to devalue the land mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to force the people out. Yeah. That the, the people that made that community mm -hmm. force them out. Bring some bring people some in other with people some back money, in with some money. Bring value up. up. Yeah. Right. Right. Is the best use. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Because we first went in the inner cities and they push us out to the suburbs. Right. And once we get to the suburbs, suburbs, then they come back out there. Right. It's back and forth. It's music factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's double oaks. Yeah. So my thing with that is, and this is what we were talking about in previous episodes, how do you combat gentrification? How can you do it? Now, Cray was saying in a previous episode, when we sit there, we don't make use of it. So, and because we don't have the money to. Right. So how do you combat gentrification as colored people? Like, how do you fight that? I ask myself this all the time. <laughs> so, like, okay. So, I think one of the things about life is all about personal growth, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, we we have the brothers like Umar Johnson yeah. and, and um, uh, RZA. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just I can name so many different brothers that talk about um, 
financial stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, how to build wealth, right? Mm-hmm. But, and all of that is great. Mm-hmm. But how, how do you translate that to someone who had who might be a single parent with children? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Basically, basically right. motherfuckers who, who don't got the money. Right. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it, it, we, can, we can talk about strategic plans, but mm-hmm. at the end of it, every plan has to have some sort of capital right. yeah. behind it. Yeah. And if you right. just don't, you know, I, I can easily say, uh, yeah, here, put $1,000 in um, in Intel mm-hmm. because they pay dividends quarterly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that $1,000 mm-hmm. over seven years can make you $10,000. Mm-hmm. I can easily say that. But if you ain't got $1,000 that right. you can spare mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, to tie mm-hmm. up in the market. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's all about time. Yeah. It, it don't double overnight. It mm-hmm. takes time. Exactly. Right. So then, okay, well, what is the strategic plan Mm -hmm. to combat that? And I'll be honest with you, I've been beating my head against the wall trying trying to to figure figure it out. out. Yeah. Because ultimately, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Craig. My thing is like, do we do we even need to go back? You know what I'm saying? Like, like at at this point, I feel like everybody is starting, like all the blacks are starting to move out to like the suburb areas. You know what I'm saying? And like we buying these homes, and then we fit in like. Our cousins, nieces, uncles, everybody living up under one of the house and shit. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you go out to these areas, they nice homes, but they they look like shit because don't nobody take care of them, and the communities don't have no HOA. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like if we did take care of those communities and we actually started like turning them Jones into like maybe like businesses or trying to do something out there, we wouldn't need to go back to the city. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would have way more land, way more space. We wouldn't have to deal with the police, I feel like, as much and shit like that. You Wait a minute. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I feel you. I, Go I, ahead. I definitely feel you on that. Um, and, I, and I'll say one thing, part of that is, um, I would say, knowledge yourself. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. If you, if you really have an internal struggle of being proud of who you are, Right. Mm-hmm. Me, and then when I say who you are, I mean who you are, whether you own a piece of property or not, mm-hmm. whether you own your car or have or have no car. Mm-hmm. Right. If you if you have a struggle with being proud of who you are without any sort of materialistic or any status ah. attached to it. Right. Because mm-hmm. the foundation of it is if you can't be proud, like if, if I can't wake up every day and be proud of Lewis Robert Gilmore, that's my full government name. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lewis. Right. Mm hmm. Then it don't matter whether I got a studio apartment or a five bedroom mm-hmm. house. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's I don't true. have pride in me, yeah. which subsequently is going to show mm-hmm. in my outward how I how I look on the outside. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like you said, yeah, you go to neighborhoods, beautiful homes, yeah, but the grass yeah. ain't cut, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, and I'm telling you, honest, HOA or no HOA. Folks just break rules. Yeah. Because it's an HOA in my neighborhood Mm -hmm. and this car is parked up and down. Mm -hmm. All the rules be broke. Yeah. My my neighbor behind me let trash just blow in their backyard. Mine is the that, mine yeah, is the complete. (laughs) (laughs) Mine be the complete opposite. My my HOA, I pay uh, an obscene amount of money for HOA. I pay $240 a month in HOA. Uh huh. And yeah, when I moved high. in there, it was two twenty. Right. So the first thing I I said was, well, where the hell is the money going? Yeah. Because I have a pool that looks like shit. Mm. I got a tennis court slash kickball field that's got grass <laughs> all over. I don't know right. what the fuck to do with it. I'm like, where the hell is this money going? Mm-hmm. So I don't know yeah, I the president's it, mortgage. It's got to be like unfortunately I, a lot of H them high HOAs yeah, like that. Yeah. A lot of times, the president they they carry a portion of their mortgage, if not the entire mortgage. Really? Yeah. So I heard when I when I first got there, I was asking these questions, not to them, and I was going to other people, and I was talking to my mother about it. She said you could find like third party companies where they will take your HOA and hold it until they do what they need to do, and they won't get that HOA back until they bring up. What the, what the hell right, are they not doing? Right, right. So, but I can't find these places. I'll I look into that. Yeah. So you and know what I mean? I'm like, 
like you. I gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. And this, so this is the other side of me mm-hmm. is union organizing. I'm a union organizer. I work in the airlines and I, and I do a lot of union work. Mm-hmm. But Organizing is organizing. Whether you do it for community, yeah. whether you do it in the community. Right? Yeah, yeah. So now I'm really nerding out because I'm like, hey, brother, mm-hmm. we might have some plan here. Mm-hmm. Find this company out. Mm-hmm. Do some organizing in the neighborhood. That works. Because here's the thing. No business changes until you affect their wallet. Exactly. Right? So if you can get the entire neighborhood to be like, you know what? This is jacked up. We all paying this obscene amount of money mm-hmm. for a swimming pool that I wouldn't even let my dog swim in. Yeah. For a tennis court. Mm-hmm. That I nah, bro, I ain't going over there, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the entire neighborhood was to stand and stand do that, together. Mm-hmm. right? Saying, listen, we all paying our HOA, but it's over here in this lot box. Yeah, and until y'all produce, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then you know, I guess it'll just sit there, right? And then figure right. out, and then figure out, well, what can we do with it? Mm. Uh. It sound a like big a plan. old pot where everybody can <laughs> really buy. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, that's, that's sp- go ahead, Craig. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's interesting how these HOAs, man. Like sometimes it just be like it, it's no point of even having the joint because, like, it's like if you don't got no grass and you ain't got no food, then what you got to away for? Like for the street? And yeah. Man, how often <laughs> do so, the need to be replaced? Yeah. So, and I, I use my neighborhood. So the breakdown of my HOA is supposedly for this fountain and this scenery up front that ain't even gonna be there until like springtime. <laughs> this, oh next wow! Year. Are um, you serious? And then, and then of course they talk about like enforcing like they don't want any overnight parking on the streets, mm, so, right? Yeah. I ain't seen a tow truck roll through yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, they a lot of it to me is smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. Then, and then they had the nerve to tell you, uh, you you know, uh, service type vehicles can be parked in the driveway. I told my mom that because, um, matter of fact, I was home service and her, type her neighbor vehicle. had this big old like dump truck and he would pull it in. So, you know, I was going to school for a thing. I'm like, Ma, he can't. <laughs> he can't do that. Like, if y'all all complain, because like when it came in, it was like, the whole house just and I'm like he can't because really? the level the weight of that truck yeah. in a driveway yeah. it could crack the whole yeah. foundation I I like, you know. Damn. Yeah. you know what I'm saying split mm-hmm. now mind you a dump truck of course I don't yeah. want I don't want it there right yeah, yeah. but I, yeah. let's say you work for uh, Charlotte Water mm-hmm. right a lot of times your truck you sign it out like that's your truck yeah, yeah. and you drive it home like just like some right. police cars. just like police yeah. cars yeah. right yeah mm-hmm. to me that to me i you can't tell me that aside from a dump truck or 18 wheeler yeah right but just a regular pickup pickup mm-hmm. truck right yeah or a utility style pickup that's mm-hmm. got the boxes yeah if that is my bread and butter that pays my HOA, yeah. that pays my mortgage, yeah. I think that is a little absurd to tell me, mm-hmm. well, you can't park it in your driveway. Yeah. It's one thing if I'm parking it on yeah. the street, mm-hmm. but if I if I get it in the driveway, mm-hmm. leave me alone. Yeah. And the thing is, there are HOAs that will enforce that. Mm. They will come out and tow your, your work truck mm-hmm. out of your driveway. Wow. Meanwhile, your neighbor's 1967 Cadillac. Yeah. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Mm-hmm. So, like, the HOA is just basically like the fleet police and shit. They just. Yeah, like, I was going to say they enforce the, loop, they, the rules. You, you, you yeah. I said they, they pick and choose what they, they pick want to do. They pick and choose yeah. what rules and who they want to mess with. Right. I, I've, what I've found mm-hmm. in most. Yeah, I, I have never really found a consistent HOA other than HOAs that are in high rise apartment buildings. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because that's simple, it's, it's yeah. less. It's less leg work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Little to no maintenance. No maintenance anything. other yeah. than the pool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Damn, man. It's crazy. Like, man, society always trying to control how people live and shit. Right. Like, damn. Yeah. And sometimes with the HOAs, too, if they take too long to say something to um, someone who lives in a home, they can't, after a while, they can't say nothing to no, them. No, because it's an acquiesce. Yeah. Really? You've, yeah. You've turned your head this long? Yeah. You can't. 
You can't enforce those rules anymore. <laughs> you can't anymore. enforce it. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a legal term. Actually, and then yes. another wow. another homeowner may try to do it, and they can enforce, enforce those rules on them. them. But Are because they were like, kind of like grandfather in, it's like, you yep. can't say nothing to me. Yep. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, man, I did Bro, not know that. Shit. Strategic. Yeah, it I definitely know. is. It sucks. It's, it's strategic. It's strategic. But this is crazy. I, I don't know. The, the 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 question was, you know, how how do we right combat mm-hmm. that? How yeah. do we change that? I think a, the great deal of it involves education. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And educating yeah. early. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. Because. If, if you listen to like all the greats, the financial gurus, right? Mm-hmm. Like if Warren Buffett was to come in this room right now, we mm-hmm. all had the ability to ask him five questions a piece, right? Yeah. In any interview you've ever seen Warren Buffett, he never gives out advice on a specific stock. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. 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 His very first piece of advice is always what? Learn. Mm-hmm. Never stop mm-hmm. learning. Mm-hmm. Always, always a read. student. Yeah. Always a student. Yeah. Always. That's why I so, told you. Yeah. I'm, I'm a student today. <laughs> and so because of that, I think that hearing that, mm-hmm. I guess, over and over again, could hopefully get people to understand that there is wealth in knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? you got to read. Right? You got to read. Because, okay, you might not have the capital in your pocket right now, mm-hmm. but if you keep educating yourself, you can on basic strategy, right? Yeah. Basic yeah. financial principle. Mm-hmm. Then you could find yourself in a position to where, okay, now the knowledge that I have attained, mm-hmm. be it on my own or be it through uh, education system, whatever, yeah. has mm-hmm. now granted me the ability to obtain capital mm-hmm. that I can then mm-hmm. use to work on my behalf. Uh, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah. And then... Mm-hmm learning that whatever capital that we do have on hand Mm -hmm. to be better stewards of. Mm. Yeah. And for me, I I use myself personally. I got laid off in 08. That's how I got into the airline industry. Mm. I left a job that I was making almost 90, 92 K a year to go make 959 an hour. Oh, right. I never forget. It was September 8th, 2008. I walked in, went to scan my ID Boop, boop, none. Are you serious? Whole department, 15 of us. They moved our whole department over to Nairobi, India, over oh, the weekend. Outsource. Oh, that's some Right? Mm. <laughs> wow. Boom. All right, cool. So, first thing I did, you know, I left. Mm-hmm. I had like two motorcycles, Damn. sold them, put them on Craigslist. They was gone within three hours. Damn. Because I knew that bullshit severance package wasn't going to last six months. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be lucky if it lasts six days Mm -hmm. based on the lifestyle I was living. So, one, I realized, okay, I got to restructure my lifestyle. I can't do what I was doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, one, be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? There a lot. I think a lot of times with us, we live kind of in a facade Mm -hmm. where we don't want to realize when, quite frank, shit's fucked up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, one, be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Be real. About whether or not you can continue to afford what mm-hmm. you're what you're currently doing. Yeah, and if you yeah. realize that you can't, okay, now make the necessary changes mm-hmm. and quick because a lot of it is trying to impress people that really right. don't, don't, have, give they don't give a right. damn. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like they don't care. Yeah. They don't care. So, I once I learned that for me, mm-hmm. my life changed. Right. Mm-hmm. So then I'm working at the airline making what I consider chump change. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for years I was just, woe is me. I ain't got no money. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then one day, uh, my uncle who I refer to as my pops sat me down and was like, yo, I don't, he's like, I don't think you realize how much money really come across your hands. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he said, I'm going to tell you, I know this because even when you was making the money that you was making, I don't think you realize how much money you was making then. Wow. And you was making yeah. money. And you was making money. Mm-hmm. Right. And so he yeah. sat me down and really gave me like the most basic budget oriented kind of course mm-hmm. about, yeah. all right, this is X, Y, Z. You got to get on the budget. A yeah. lot of people are afraid of that word. Yeah. It's kind of like. Budget and diet kind of coincide with each other because we, <laughs> we immediately associate those words with sacrifice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. But 
on the other side of sacrifice and discomfort mm-hmm. is change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Character development. Character, too. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, then, and so I learned a lot about myself in the last three years mm-hmm. in going through the process to build my house and, and get the mortgage and mm-hmm. all of that. And really just becoming focus driven about being a better steward mm-hmm. over my money. Yeah. And Tasha will tell you, when she first met me, mm-hmm. oh, I was Mr. Overtime at the airport. Word. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing for me. <laughs> hey, just to tell you, yeah. <laughs> like my man, every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm out here getting this money, yeah. sun up to sun down, yeah. right? Yeah. And I still couldn't figure out where it was going. Mm-hmm. I still was like, mm-hmm. I don't think I've worked a quarter of the overtime that I used to work mm-hmm. because I just got more strategic right. and became a better steward. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. taught yourself. Yeah. I taught myself. And and that's the one part. You got to be humble. If you don't know, all right, I don't know. Mm. Now, okay, who does know? Right. Yeah. Right? And then tap into them. Yeah. And then so for the people... Go, go ahead, Cray. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So, what kind of okay? So, like, what you know, the people listening, what kind of practices would you did you implement into you know making a better steward of your of your fund of your fund? All right. So, um, I'm not like there are some people who are like Dave Ramsey. Like they just love Dave Ramsey and they stand by everything he says. Mm-hmm. I do feel like yeah. there there are some flaws mm-hmm. into you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But the total money makeover and the 10 baby steps, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one of the most key things is, so it goes back to what I say, is um, your budget. And part of budgeting really is simply we have a tendency to let our money tell us what to do, yeah. not realizing that the yeah. money is the tool. Right. Mm-hmm. I need to tell right. the money yeah. what to do. Yeah. Right? And so he has a thing called Every Dollar. It's an app. You can mm-hmm. download it. There's a free version. Mm-hmm. And then there's a version, I think it's like $10 a month, that you can actually tie to your bank accounts, and it'll track all your expenditures. Oh, Lord, mm-hmm. that'll be embarrassing like a <laughs> <laughs> but hold up. You want to make dollars again? But, but it's going to show up. you. It's going to be right in your face, right, like right, what you right. don't need to be doing. So, yeah. I'm going to be transparent. You say McDonald's, I'll be real with you. Mine was canteen vending every day at the airport. Yeah. Bro. I was yeah. swiping my debit card. Right. Yes. A dollar twenty five for this snicker. Yeah, oh, dollar twenty five for this. That's, that's me. me. When that's I started me. seeing, I'm like, yo, a dollar twenty five, dollar twenty five, dollar twenty five. Yes. Seventy five charges of a dollar twenty five in one banking cycle. Oh, right. My gosh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you, so you add that up, right? Mm-hmm. You'd be like, damn, bro. Mm-hmm. They be like, damn, I could have went to Costco and bought five cases of this stuff. Yeah, right. Exactly. And just yeah. packed it in my lunchbox. Mm-hmm. So. That one, like I said, get real with yourself. Take What's that really app one more time? Every dollar. Every, Every dollar. dollar. Okay, Every guys. Dollar. Yeah. And the basis of the app is, at, you know, at the top of it, mm-hmm. most of us, quick math, you know, you can tell before taxes how much money your paycheck yeah. is if you hourly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you salary, you pretty much know what your, mm-hmm. right? So you put that number in up top. That gives you your, your and then you have all these classes. Mm. So. You have the basics or the, the the essentials, which according to Dave is food, shelter, clothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, of course, within like the shelter, of course, there's the bills, utilities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, and you pretty much set it where you can set limits on each category of how much of that top number mm-hmm. is being allocated every month. Ah. With, so now we're talking. This is basic budget principles. Yeah. Okay. We have we have the number that we know the in, the incoming number. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then we set mm-hmm. some outgoing numbers. There are certain numbers that we know are ain't just change. that aren't going to yeah. change, yeah. right? So your your rent ain't going to change or your mm-hmm. mortgage ain't going to change. Mm-hmm. Car note. Mm-hmm. Car note ain't going to change. Yeah. Right. Boom. So you set that. Mm-hmm. Then you have different things like I mean you even put date night. So that's like extracurricular that yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. You got to be right. real about it. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, okay, so you set the number. So if we say that we got a budget of sixty dollars for the month for date night, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Once you hit that sixty dollars, now if you hit that sixty dollars in one night, then guess what, bro? That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's all. That date night is done for the month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
But what that does is that the the whole purpose is telling your money what to do, mm-hmm. right? And when you right. do that, you start to actually see how much money we tend. Because even even in most like stressful financial situations, when you really start looking at it, yeah, from a a uh, macro or microeconomics perspective mm-hmm. and you start realizing like damn bro I didn't even realize I had a whole nother $200 here that I just blew through mm. and then, so now yeah. you have to start asking yourself well what could I have done right. better yeah. right mm-hmm. that's called discipline right <laughs> and, 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 and ultimately all financial principles have one thing in common that is discipline, discipline. Yeah. right yeah that's true and, and, and I will also say balance right mm-hmm. And this is where um, I kind of differ from Dave Ramsey's approach. Mm -hmm. His approach is you suffer and sacrifice until you get completely debt free. Because his thing is to be debt free, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. And he has this this other thing, the the debt snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And I'll get into that in a minute. But I also, I feel like there's a way that you can attain balance throughout that process Mm -hmm. where you can handle your business. Mm-hmm. And set yourself up to propel financially while at the same time still living life. Living. Yeah. It's just you have to adjust what your idea of living right, yeah. is. Yeah. Temporarily. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm a sneakerhead. I love sneakers. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Guess what? Until three weeks ago, the last pair of sneak like sneakers with so Jordans that mm-hmm. I bought was the Bordeaux Sevens that dropped like six springs ago. Mm. I got focused. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I want to get out of this hole I'm in. Mm-hmm. What's greater? Sneakers or, the, or getting out of the hole? Yeah. Because I was yeah. looking fly as hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was fly. <laughs> but on the other side of being fly out in the public, yeah. right. I was at home. Yeah. Woe is me. Yeah. Right. Struggling. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Look real good. It's like my mom said, you got the designer bag, but you ain't got a dime in it. <laughs> mom's dropping jewels. You know? Shout out to moms in the building. You know? But so yeah, becoming disciplined and and trying and figuring out what your balance is, mm-hmm. right? Establishing a budget, mm-hmm. and then, like I said. I got really nerded out on it. Yeah. I went and made my own spreadsheet with mm-hmm. configuration. Sound like something I'm about to be doing. Right? Yeah. I get with you. Yeah. I shoot you the the you know what I'm saying? It. Yeah. Um, it's really cool too. It's <laughs> color, color. <laughs> but um dance. <laughs> <laughs> mad excited, y'all. Hey, same <laughs> here, man. Yo. You know, yeah. Um and because and that's the interesting thing about relationships when you if you're with someone, usually there's 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 a balance, right? You have yeah. someone who nerds out on numbers, and then yeah. you have someone who's like, "Yo, just tell me what." Just figure it out. <laughs> right. That would be me. Like, right. figure it out, baby. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you. Bye bye. And that's yeah. how me and Tasha are. Yeah. You know, I. She don't really care about exactly how we got to the number. Yeah. I just got to give her a number every month. That's that's me. Right? That's me and Constance. You know I just got to give her the number. Right. And, but that's cool. I'm cool. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. But that's cool. because the numbers are always in my head. Exactly. Every day. Like, exactly. It, it, you know, every, <laughs> so, um, but establishing a budget, mm-hmm. sticking to the budget, right? Yeah. And then understanding you have to treat your household no different than I'll use. Um, Doug Parker, the CEO of American Airlines, does right. Mm-hmm. He he. They they look at this mm-hmm. every quarter. Yeah. Right. Every mm-hmm. quarter. There's there's a reason for quarterly reports and annual reports, yeah. right? Yeah. Because what was working in mm-hmm. the third quarter of last year maybe might maybe not, not work yeah. in the first quarter of this year based on. The goal. Yeah. So set a goal. Ah. You gotta become goal oriented. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? That's and the truth. And then once you establish a goal, mm-hmm. sit down, write it out mm-hmm. with some steps behind it, mm-hmm. right? Some possible mm-hmm. steps to achieve the goal. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Now we got a plan. Yeah. When you add discipline and action, mm-hmm. dang. And, and don't be afraid to fuck up. You're gonna mm-hmm. fuck up. Yeah. You gonna have some. You gonna. You know. You be like. Well, that didn't really work out. Mm-hmm. I've had that admitted yeah. several times to my spouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, you know what? My plan didn't really pan out the way mm-hmm. that I thought it was. Well, that's life. And and yeah. right. Yeah. Blueprint. Blueprint. Yeah. You keep, right. keep but going. You, you keep going. 
right? Mm-hmm. You don't quit. You just keep you you. I was somebody I forgot who it was was quoting Einstein. He said, "It's not that I'm smarter than any other body in anybody else. I just stick with problems a little bit longer." Oh, damn, that's deep, right? That's deep. no L's, just lessons. You just yeah. keep yeah. keep yeah. going, figure out what works for you. What yeah. works, right? Yeah. Um, and then from there, so once you've done all of that, right? Then mm-hmm. within part of getting to the budget, so once you establish what your budget is, and then you figure out where you have extra money. Mm-hmm. Dave talks about the emergency fund. Okay. Where you have a thousand dollars, be it in cash in a box somewhere in a crib mm-hmm. or in a savings account that you just don't touch. Mm-hmm. That's your emergency fund. Because Murphy's Law says what yep. will happen is going to yes. happen. Yes. Right. And so you need some reserves. Yeah. So and once you establish the thousand dollars in an emergency fund, then you can start what he calls the debt snowball. Now some people say attack your debt from the highest interest rate first. Mm-hmm. His is balance wise, meaning reverse it, meaning list your debts from smallest to largest, Mm -hmm. right? Right? Mm -hmm. And then whatever extra money that you have in your budget, throw that at the debt. Mm -hmm. So if you got, we just say two credit cards, $5,000 balance and $800 balance. Mm -hmm. And if you see that you got $200 in your budget, yeah. Extra. So make sure you make your minimum payment on the five thousand dollar credit card. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then take that extra, knock out the eight hundred dollar credit card. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, man. You guys. Oh my god, you messing it up, man. I love it. This is, this is live, though. This is live as hell. You know what I'm saying? This is raw. Like, oh, but I'm with goodness. it. I'm with it. Well, unplug the mic, man. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Who are you talking to? Zena? Yeah. <laughs> He's talking to the dog, y'all. <laughs> This is bloopers on Dirty oh, Mouth Radio. Oh, man. <laughs> the dog wants this knowledge, too. How many bones can I can I save in my account? You know what I mean? We're going to throw the dog a bone today. Oh, man. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, so you, you throw that extra money, right? Yeah. And the smaller debt till you get it knocked out. Yeah. So now, okay, so let's say your, your minimum payment on that $800 credit card was $30. So now you got $230 extra a month. Ah. You start throwing that at the other credit card. And, and it's just that's the whole um, analogy. Mm-hmm. A snowball starts off little, but you yeah. keep rolling through the snow. It gets it'll, bigger. It'll, it'll, it'll get bigger. It'll get gain bigger. momentum. Yep. That way, you can get as consumer debt free as possible. Ah. Because his his mindset is to once you go into the concept of wanting to buy a house, mm-hmm. you want to be as debt free as possible. Yeah. So that, you that go into income. it, yeah. yeah your debt, debt to income rate, and that does one. It affords you to get a little bit more house than you thought you could. Yeah, but don't go crazy with that because yeah. you don't want to be house poor. Yeah, so mm-hmm. a lot of people yeah. that's house poor just because you qualify for mm-hmm. a million dollar mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't mean, mean you need to get it. Need to get one. <laughs> yeah, man. Be real about yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um. But. The thing for most of us, if you were not born into a hedge fund, if you were not mm-hmm. born into generational wealth, which that's life insurance. We'll mm-hmm. get on that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the greatest tool that you have for building wealth is your income. And if you don't have control over your income mm-hmm. and how much of it goes out, mm-hmm. like you, you can't build wealth making payments to other people. Yeah. Right? yeah. As, as long as you're making payments to Amex, MasterCard, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, mm-hmm. uh, Nailnet, D, you know, whoever mm-hmm. student loan people, yeah, payday loans, whatever. As long as you're making payments to those entities that mm-hmm. are charging you money, yeah, right, you can never pay yourself. Mm. So the goal is to get as debt free as possible, if you can, 100 percent debt free, yeah, to the tune of now you know that the only debt you have is your mortgage, mm-hmm. and then yourself, you owe yourself, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. You know, and That's then true. and then from there, I mean, because think about it. Say you know you man, you know two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, and you have no debt, mm-hmm. and was it the current rates were like four point five percent with twenty percent down, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. Yep. So 
we'll just say a thirteen hundred dollar mortgage, right? Mm-hmm. You break that down, thirteen hundred dollars divided by twelve. If you could pay an extra hundred nine dollars, hundred eight dollars mm-hmm. a month mm-hmm. on your mortgage every month up to the principal. Yeah. So make, yeah. your, make your mortgage payment. Yep. A week later, you go to the bank, call up the bank. Yo, I want to make a principal payment of X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You can turn your 30-year mortgage into a 15. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Hell, an 8. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. Right? Yeah. So that's less interest that you're paying to mm-hmm. the bank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, guess what? The equity in your home continues to go up. Exactly. So you win. Yeah. And that's another reason why real estate mm-hmm. is a good wealth building tool because- for most of us, the, the concept of being able to save fifty to sixty thousand dollars cash mm-hmm. in the bank is kind of yeah, that's rough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like in order to do that, you got to be on like PB and J and sunflower seeds, <laughs> water, right? Water. water. <laughs> but yeah, equity yeah is is a great tool. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. And then our counterparts they learn how to use that equity to their advantage, mm-hmm. cash in on a percentage of that equity. To put into another piece of property. Yep. Keep Oops. it going. My bad, y'all. It's all good. Um, and and boom, boom. Yeah. So you making money hand over fist. Yeah. Or your money is working for you at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the um, truth. Because that's when my even my granddaddy told me that he was like, "Yo, you know, overtime is great. You know, it's a good tool if mm-hmm. you have access to it. But remember, you can never outwork money." Yeah. Money don't get tired. Money don't have childcare problems. Money don't get sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's know. true. Come on, granddaddy. Yeah, he kicked some knowledge right there. And, and, but see, that, that, that's the interesting thing about our community. Mm-hmm. There's a wealth of knowledge that we have about finances. Yeah. But it's in our own encoded language. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we just we our, our people are not so much decimal point people, right? Mm-hmm. That sit and talk percentages in boardrooms, right? Mm-hmm. But we drop knowledge through colloquialism, through, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Through our jargon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But it's being able to decipher that and like, okay, how can you translate you that, that. Mm-hmm. into a way that you can apply it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So simply what my granddaddy was saying was, you got to find something to invest your money. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's where changing the mindset of getting out of like 100% consumerism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't always be a consumer, be an yeah. investor. Mm-hmm. Be so, yeah. so me, I use me, mm-hmm. my accountant. <clears throat> when I first met him, he noticed like, man, every time I see you, you got on a fresh pair of kicks. Mm-hmm. You know what he asked me? He said, "How many shares of stock do you have in Nike?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, for the listeners out here, man, this is just a piece. This is part part one. Okay, I'm gonna let him kick this little bit of knowledge on stocks, but that's gonna be part two. So. And we'll get into that, <laughs> right? But yeah. boom, yeah. And then when he hit me, he was like, "Yeah, you know, once you get get into that 250 shares or above with Nike, they start sending you shoes." Mm. Not only that, but Nike pay dividends, right? Yeah. So I learned how to buy back my freedom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you can do the yeah. same thing with your cell phone ah, bill. Ah, really? Yeah. Verizon, AT and T, they all pay dividends, right? Mm. You buy enough shares. Over time, yeah. the dividend pay out. You've covered the cost of your cell phone That's bill. That's real talk. From your own I'm about to yeah. do research. Yeah, <laughs> man. You like Jack and Coke? Oh, yeah. That's my Brown favorite. Brown Foreman, the parent company of Jack Daniels, mm-hmm. right? They yeah. pay dividends. Yeah. Coca-Cola Bottling Company, they pay dividends. Mm. Your happy hour can pay for itself through dividends. So, I'm going to just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We be back. <laughs> yeah. Now everybody's mad and shit because they can't hear the rest of it. Boy, you got to wait, baby. You got to wait. We dropped enough juice for the day, man. Yeah. Keep coming. Keep coming, man. So, it's been a pleasure. Man, oh, listen, pleasure, I've been waiting man. on this one, brother. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I mean, just because cause we talk. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, that day at the job, man. We, oh, yeah. That little conversation. And, and the thing is, I like talking about money. Yeah. From from mm-hmm. the standpoint of money being a tool. Mm-hmm. Not just for material yeah. possession, but to right. build wealth, right? You, yeah. You, you got to leave a legacy other than just your namesake, right? Yeah. That's like, true. Oh, you know, don't get me wrong. It, it's beautiful when you go to, you know, a funeral and, man, that brother, that sister was great, man. Mm-hmm. Every time, you know, they're just a good person, mm-hmm. a good heart. Okay, cool. But do, do they have some physical liquid assets? Yeah. For their yeah. family, right? Yeah. You know what 
you know, mm-hmm. which is why life insurance, get some life insurance. Yeah. Yeah. At least 10 to 12 times your annual income. Mm. That way, if something happened to you, your spouse or your family, your financial position mm-hmm. is still intact. Ah, I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there, there are life insurance policies out there. You can get a life insurance policy that, if nothing else, will cover the cost of your mortgage. Really? I got one. Mm-hmm. So, if something happened to me, mm-hmm. guess what? Tasha's straight. She yeah. got to worry about paying no mortgage. Yeah. Truth be told, they're going to mm-hmm. cut her check. She can pay the whole mortgage off. Right then and there. Right. Mm. And and actually I got that in my in my in my will. Mm. There will be no disbursements of funds until all of my estate matters are handled. Really? Yeah. Mm. Wow. But ain't no need to fight over no money. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Until yeah. the house paid off. Yeah. Any debt that I have mm-hmm. paid off. Mm-hmm. Because I that's your loved ones will be grieving enough. Yeah. Now you want to add yeah, on yeah. financial, financial burdens, oh, right? Man. Yeah. So life insurance, and that's the thing. Most of the, the majority of wealth in this country is built off of insurance policy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The overnight wealth, that's that's a one in one, mm-hmm. right? Everybody else, life insurance, mm. life insurance, multiple policies. Shoot. Walmart got life insurance on their employees. Walmart, and, and I'm just using really? Walmart as an wow. example. Most major corporations. When you mm-hmm. uh, get hired with them and you sign your pre-employment package, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's fine print saying that, that that you are now relinquishing the right for that company because they do have your social security number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the part of it. They buy life insurance on you. Wow. I don't care if you don't work. I don't care if you ain't make your probation. Guess what? They continue to pay the premiums on that life insurance policy when what? you die. If you work, if you ever work for Walmart, if you yeah. work just a seasonal Christmas. Yeah. Thirty years from now, you know, Lord, you know, you, you go on to glory. Yeah. Guess what? Sam Walton's family is getting a check. Wow. Are you serious? so? If your very job mm-hmm. has a life insurance policy on you, why you don't have one on yourself? Yeah, that's real talk. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. Dog, man. I'm, oh, you I'm you coming back I'm for coming part back. two? Right. Oh yeah, yeah you already cool, know, man. man. That's cool, man. <laughs> that's cool, man. Yo, we we dropped so many gems, man. This is the episode that people are gonna be rewatching. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be listening to this over and over again. I'm gonna be listening to it over and over again. Well, you know, you got my number, bro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Without a doubt, man. You know. But shoot, I, I, I'm speechless, man. Yeah, this was a great. I yeah. learned a lot, and people usually say, "Oh, it's a lot of substance to this podcast mm-hmm. today." Was full of substance. Yes, yes. I just want my people mm-hmm. to be the best for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And right. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't leave without saying this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the brother who owns Social Status, which okay, is a yeah. clothing boutique, yeah, 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 several yeah, yeah. locations, yeah. right? He does this thing once a month. Cause they they opened up the back of the space. They have a co working space. Be social. I was telling you about yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. It's in the back. Mm-hmm. Free. You know. You know. You just you walk in. Mm-hmm. If you need to do some work on your computer, they got Wi Fi. Great space. Yeah. Well, he does this mm-hmm. event in there called Free Game, where he, and he's an open book. Mm-hmm. And we talk about a brother who has done multiple collaborations with like Nike mm-hmm. to produce social status um, exclusive. Sneaker drops. They did. Wow. They did one for All Star Weekend. They did an Air Jordan Six. Damn. It's got pony hair. It's dope. Are you serious? They just did an Air Force One, and the the name of it is in like Japanese, which translates to um, like machine wash cold only. It's oh, wow. about the delicacies of life. Oh, Real. It's dope. Man. So, but that's the thing. He's a yeah. he's one of those people. He's just he. And this is where we talk about how knowledge is wealth. Yeah. He's just a strategic thinker. He figured out how to build a business and brand mm-hmm. around his ability to think and conceptualize, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. he does a thing called free game where he just dropped gems. It, you know, it's an open format. Yeah. And one of the things he touched on, the last one that I went to, was part of, part of the thing within us is we have to, one, figure out what what your, whatever your, your top, number is mm-hmm. like if, like if you he, he, he as he said if i ask you right now what's your number like what is the top number if you would if that was to be deposited in your bank account and you mm-hmm. could say i'm good i don't need to work no more mm-hmm. what's your number mm-hmm. 
crickets, right? And he did that on purpose. Wow. A lot of times you have to do the soul searching within yourself to figure out whatever your happy place is, right? Wow. Be it living somewhere, be it financial attainment, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Even in relationships, what is your happy? Like, what what is the it for you? Uh-huh. And then being honest with it and sitting in it. Mm. Be true to yourself. Be true to that Sade Lation tied into Lou over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be true to yourself. Yeah. Know thyself. Dang. And be cool with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Be mm-hmm. cool with it. And once you can do that, it goes back to what I say taking pride in who you Once you can do that, you have pride in yourself. <laughs> right? This all ties in, man. It all, yeah. thing. It all ties in. Yeah. And every day becomes a day where you're like, okay, I'm walking in purpose. I'm walking yeah. with I'm a goal. Walking. Yeah. You know? Living my life. Man. Like Whoo, man. So you got even extra, okay? We gave you a little bit more, all mm-hmm. right? Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be part two. Dude, this might even be a three or four part series. We don't even know at this point. Cause it's just so hey, many man. gems being dropped. I'm, I'm all about, you know. Hey, we can just add a financial segment. Yeah, once a quarter. Hey, I'm just saying, hey, once a quarter. Hey. I'm good with that. In the new good, year, yeah. I'm good cool with that. Yeah, sound like a plan to me, man. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, this is your boy Comedic Energy. Sure day. Your girl Golden. Lou Gilmore. Your boy Pregnant. Hey. And this is always produced by Livewire Sound and Entertainment. Peace out, peoples. This show is produced by Livewire Sound and Entertainment. If you're looking to rent premium sound equipment for your next concert or podcast at a low price, go to www.livewiresoundent.com.